Welcome everybody to Unfilter with Pastor David. Pastor, How you welcome. Doing, John? Thank you guys for tuning in. You know, Pastor, I, I wanted to ask you a question or talk a little bit about uh, this kind of this concept that I've, I can hear in different circles. Uh, you know, the Lord has blessed this ministry. We have we have a couple of services, and and there's a number of people that come that uh, really enjoy being part of this ministry. You know, and they serve in, in a lot of ways. But there are those who desire a personal, more personal relationship with you. And being that uh, we are in a place with multiple services and a, a number of people coming, how is it that you're able to be the shepherd of these people, but yet it's not going to be as personal as they would like? Uh, how, how do they, how, what, first of all, what do you think about that when you may hear something like that? Well, I used to go to a, a, a smaller church and and uh, I had a, a personal relationship with the pastor. He'd come over to my house and we'd eat dinner. Where here, it, it would be almost impossible to do that with every single person. So how would you, how do you navigate through that? You know, one of the ways that we had to approach that was, uh, and it's, I think, a very natural way, John, for me at least, is um, I have never felt on a personal level that it was something that I could even possibly do get to know every single person and, and their stories mm -hmm. and family and things of that nature. I just have never had the, the capacity of doing that. Um, in, the, in the beginning of our church, that was much more possible because we had 25, maybe 30 adults and 15 children. That, that was not difficult at all. But I read uh, something, in, and I think it's true, so I'll quote it, that it's usually at the point of around 200 members that the pastor begins to have difficulty remembering the details of so many lives. And there's some truth to that because that happened to me between 300 or so people. So I had to make adjustments. Uh, and the adjustment was, you know, to be available to those who had any desire to, to say hello, visit or whatever. And I, over the years, I've continued doing that. As you know, in between first and second service, I am habitually out there. Mm -hmm. Anybody who would really want to say hello, visit, or whatever, I'm available for that. And on occasion, I'm, I'm able to be at different events in the church, you know, a men's thing here or whatever. And I'm able to just to be amongst the people who would like to visit. You know, I don't want to put it on myself as if I'm that important that they need to know me. On the other hand, I want them to know that it's possible for us to visit too. So I try to make myself available in that way. But the way that I've tried also to handle the, uh, the amounts of people that we minister to and all has been to try to uh, Im Im impart the vision God gave to me into the hearts of other men. You know, like Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, that which he had received he is to give to faithful men who can, you know, give that to, to others. And so I've tried to, to raise up men in our fellowship who are capable of ministering to people. And so we have a, a good-sized group of men, as well as Marie did the same with, with the ladies, who are able to, if they can't get specifically to us, me or her, well, there's always somebody there that we can say, uh, this person has been trained, he, he loves the church, he, he loves... Um, he loves the people of the fellowship, and that person can be of help. And that's what we've done over the years, mm -hmm. John. You know, over the last 41-plus years that I've pastored this church, I had to come to realize that I, I cannot get to know every single person on every single level that's possible. So because that would not have happened in any other work site, any other place that I worked. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have, you know, the number of employees that we have here, then you have the number of individuals who attend and the different services. When you start accumulating the numbers that that are potentially here or very often are here, you, you realize that it's just not really possible for me, Marie, or any single person to get to know uh, every person. I have said in the past that uh, I would have loved to have been able to do that because I, I do like to know the sheep. And on occasion, I'll be at a restaurant. You've been with me more mm -hmm. than once where somebody will walk up and start talking to us. And, and I love that. I enjoy speaking face-to-face -face and visiting with people. And 
the best that I can do is pour my heart out in the Word of God to the people mm -hmm. and share with them and uh, encourage them because at the end of the day, uh, the greatest gift I can give anybody is a well-crafted Bible study that has potential to be applied and to change a life. Right. And so that's what I have satisfied my, my heart in doing is to prepare the very best meal I can for this family and when given opportunity to spend even a moment with somebody, to take that moment mm -hmm. and enjoy it with them. So I train people up. I give them the Bible studies as, as I do. And I, I pray for them often, you know, as a, as a cluster group, if you will. I pray for a fellowship. We all do. And, um, and I think that if people are coming to receive a Bible study and to get to know Jesus, that that's possible here. Yeah. And the way, and, and uh, we've talked about this off camera, the way that you really demonstrate the love and shepherding the flock here is by giving them the Word of God, a life-transforming uh, message. Amen. And, uh, uh, and so uh, it's amazing to see the men and the women that have been raised up, that have been a representation of your heart in, in a lot of senses to minister to the people. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I know this first, oops, I missed this. I know this firsthand, Pastor, is that I see how much you love the, the church. I, I, you, you talk about it, I, I see it. And, uh, and it's amazing to see the love and the, and the dedication that you have for our church. Well, you know what, that's, uh, that's, it's easy to love the people of this fellowship, John, but because by and large, the, the majority, overwhelming majority of those whom I have gotten to know on any level have been wonderful people, people that, that, that you can't help but, but love, and, and that's true. So I do what I can. You know, we have our mentoring class mm -hmm. every other week. I, I meet with a group of men. You know, I, I, I'm out as much as I can, doing as much as I can, and uh, ministering to as many as I can. Mm -hmm. And yet I've multiplied my hands with men like you and others, you know, Dave Bustamante and others, who are, um, you know, are, are expressions of the, the heart of our ministry. And so if people come to church uh, such as ours, to attend fellowship in a church such as ours, uh, I can guarantee there are quite a number of people that they can get to know and who will, will um, prove to be good brothers and, or good sisters. And I, I, I learned a long time ago, somebody pointed this out, and it's true, that if you go to a church that has any number of people, a good, good, good amount of people, if you can see at least seven people in, in your area that you can say by name and nod and appreciate, then you feel at home, you feel like you're in a community. And uh, I think that's true. If, if somebody takes some time to meet some, and the way you do that, it's how many different things do we have opportunities right. here besides the Bible studies, you know, athletics, ministry, small groups that we do have, uh, the events that we have. We have, you know, a very busy fellowship. You know, if you take some time to, to meet one or two, three or four people so that when you come to church, you can see them, recognize them, and and greet them and maybe even have lunch afterwards with them. I think that, um, that that's the best I can do is to make it, make something like that possible. And so the ones that, that move from place to place are usually the ones who have never rooted and they're not grounded mm -hmm. in the place, they're not really committed. Not to say that some have left because they, they've been hurt and had maybe a, a, a real hurt that, that wasn't, wasn't really dealt with or whatever, but the majority of people that that I've seen over these many years of ministry who uh, uproot themselves and moved on is a majority of them have uh, not really been that involved, mm -hmm. not really made that many friends. And um, so for them, it, it wasn't difficult to get up and leave. And uh, that's really something that unfortunately many churches deal with. We call it church hopping, uh, where you move from place to place, but the Bible teaches us that we ought to have a community, John, that that we should know one another to the best of our ability so we could pray for one another and encourage one another, exhort one another, comfort one another, greet one another. There are so many one another verses in Scripture because Jesus didn't create some cold climate. He, mm -hmm. he wanted us to be the body of Christ. And also my encouragement to those who may be discouraged in this fellowship or another is to examine whether or not you're involved to examine how involved are you and if there's a real need of some sort for, for a healing because of a difficulty, then 
let us know and we'll do everything we can to, to bring about the peace that you need. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing on that and, and the opportunity of you know, wanting to get to know who you are. Uh, more important, know Jesus Christ, is come to the services Just come to church. And, and come to church. And even as the COVID restrictions have lifted, uh, what a great opportunity yeah. to come and be Absolutely. part of the church family. Church family, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Remind you that we do have our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45. Uh, Pastor, you're taking us through the book of Mark. Yes, I am. And so a great opportunity to invite friends and family to come on out. And then looking ahead just a little bit, uh, December 18th, save the date. The Katinas will be coming out. We'll be showing a video. Uh, a lot of people don't know who they are mm -hmm. uh, or never heard their music. They're Samoan brothers that, uh -huh. that uh, they can harmonize like nothing. I love nothing. these guys yeah. in every way. They're, they're servants of the Lord. They're brothers to us. And they, they sing like a uh, sanctified um, temptation, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I love their harmonies. <laughs> Great and harmonies. They're, they're amazing guys. I love these guys. They'll be out for uh, our services on December 18th, which is a Sunday morning at uh, 8.30 and 1045. Invite your friends. And then even looking a little beyond that, we have our Christmas Eve service, which will be Saturday, Saturday uh, this night. year at 6 p.m. Uh, in the sanctuary. And then we'll have our regular Sunday morning services, Sunday, Christmas morning, 8.30 and 10.45 mm -hmm. Again, church family, great way to invite your friends and family to come on out, even invite your enemies, uh, but <laughs> to come out for a blessed time. And again, Pastor David, thank you so much for spending some time with our church family. Church family, thank you for tuning in. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.